Hello everyone, welcome to the 19th lecture for our course Irrigation Engineering and Hydraulic Structures. So till 18th lecture we have completed our designing of uh, alluvial canals, right? unlined canals. From today we are going to start the designing of lined canals. Okay, we are starting the designing of lined canals. So we already discussed what are lined canals, but let's start it with the definition of the lined canals. Start it with the definition of the lined. So we already defined it, and we are defining the line canal again here. So, if side slopes and the bed is covered with non erodible material, then we call such canals lined canals, right? Then we call such canals as lined canal. You can see here if our canal is covered with any sort of non erodible material like concrete, stones, boulders, bricks, then it will become rigid, right? And there will be very less erosion or no erosion. So, because of being rigid, we call lined canal as rigid canals. So, rigid canals are also known as, yeah, sorry, lined canals are also known as rigid canals because of its side slopes and bed cannot be eroded easily. So, the equation Q is equal to AV, discharge is equal to cross sectional area multiplied by velocity, actually fits for the lined canals because whenever we will increase the velocity in this canal or if we increase the cross sectional area of the canal the discharge of the canal will also increase so they are in direct relation directly proportional discharge is directly proportional to the cross sectional area and velocity in case of lined canals okay and lined canals help helps us to reduce seepage because of lining the sides, side slopes and bed of the canal what happens? It actually reduces the seepage up to 2 to 5 percent. Okay. As we have discussed the main problem in canals is the seepage and evaporation. These two were the major causes of loss of water in canal right as we have discussed in our previous lectures. So if we can control the seepage and evaporation losses in a canal then obviously that is going to be uh, the best design right so in case of line canals we can reduce the seepage losses up to two to five percent so this was a bit of introduction about the line canals which we have already discussed so let's see what are the advantages of line canals if you line up your canal what sort of advantages you can get the first thing is first and most important is reduction in seepage losses right this is the first advantage of lining your canal the second advantage is that increase in why the font size is increased let me see okay so the second advantage is increase in canal capacity we can say that we can increase the canal capacity by increasing what by increasing cross sectional area and velocity of flow okay the formula q is equal to ab represents this the third advantage of uh, lining your canal is 
that it helps to reduce the maintenance cost so reduction in maintenance cost you don't need to do the maintenance again and again right as uh, same as the non olivier or unlined canals where we were supposed to do the maintenance over time and it was actually costly costly so the next advantage is water logging will be reduced reduced because water logging most of the time water logging occurs because of the seepage seepage is in the canal right so in case of line canals the seepage is being reduced so water logging will also reduce or it may finished the reason is because of the reduction in seepage if you reduce seepage obviously you are going to reduce the water logging problem next advantage is lining of canal helps us to increase the command area to be irrigated and we have already defined what is command area in our starting lectures maybe it is um, you will find that in lecture number 4 or 5 where we have discussed the important terms related to irrigation engineering so it it also helps us to increase the command area because obviously as we said that in line canals q increases right if q is increased from this formula we know that q and a cross sectional area uh, area are directly proportional right so q is directly proportional to area so if the capacity or discharge is increased then the area will also increase and one more thing this is not the cross sectional area pardon me this is actually the area to be irrigated this is not cross sectional area this is only area we have mentioned this in above somewhere about to right velocity will increase and if velocity is increased the area will also increase this area is you are you can say it's command area the area which is to be irrigated command area this is not cross sectional area sorry so these were the advantages of lining your canal let's see what can be the disadvantages of lining the canal this advantages of lining a canal if you line a canal what can be the disadvantages the disadvantages can be the first one is that it is actually you will see high cost initially right high initial cost when you start the project the cost is going to be increased uh, so you can uh, for this point you can say that it is high cost right so lining of canal is best when your annual benefits are greater than your annual investment 
Ja, okay. The second disadvantage is that actually a construction period is longer as compared to the unlined canals or alluvial canals, right? So it is actually time consuming. It is time consuming. And the third and last disadvantage is repairing of lined canals is not easy. Okay. You may need uh, some experts or skilled labor to do the repairing work, right? So these were disadvantages. Let's jump into the design steps. Design steps of line canal or we call it rigid canal, right? So, what are the design steps? Let's see the first design step. The first design step is, as always, the first thing we need to find while designing a canal is to find out the velocity, right? First thing we will do is, we will calculate the velocity of the flow which is represented with V. So we got a formula to find out the velocity. What is the formula for that? The formula to find out the velocity of flow, we will find it by using uh, let me reduce the size, okay. We will find it by using Manning's equation. Manning's equation. What was Manning's equation? We have discussed that in the designing of Kennedy's theory too. We is equal to 1 upon n multiplied by r raised to the power 2 by 3 and then s raised to the power 1 by 2 and here r is hydraulic radius okay we know that hydraulic radius r is equal to cross-sectional area of the canal divided by weighted parameter okay so let's see what these variables represent v means velocity velocity right and r here is hydraulic radius and then n here is n is actually the roughness coefficient or we call it or you can call it Manning's coefficient or you can call it resocity coefficient R U G O S I T Y resocity coefficient okay you can call it either roughness coefficient or Manning's coefficient or resocity coefficient right these are three names for this and this n actually 
this depends on this depends on uh, surface of line lining right depends on what surface of lining what this means this means that either your surface is rough or smooth right we have discussed this earlier if your surface is rough then the value of n is going to be high we discussed this same thing in the Kennedy's theory too when we use mining equation to find out the velocity if your a surface of lining is smooth then it is going to be value is going to be less means when you can have high roughness of your surface if your surface is made up of uh, some sort of concrete right then it will be rough if you if you have lined the canal <coughs> if you are the surface of these um, side slopes and bed are made up of tile or some sort of material which is smooth then the value of n roughness coefficient remaining coefficient or resistive coefficient is going to be less okay so here a is cross sectional area cross sectional area divided by p is weighted parameter okay by using this we will uh, find out our first we will be done with our first step of finding the velocity of the flow and then our second step what is our second step our second step is to calculate the cross-sectional area we will calculate the cross-sectional area which is a so again for cross-sectional area we got a formula as we have discussed q is equal to a v right from here we can find the area area will be equal to q divided by v okay the unit will be in meter squares and the next step third step is to find weighted parameter which is represented with p so the weighted parameter can be found by using formula from uh, hydraulic radius formula we know that hydraulic radius is equal to area divided by weighted parameter right from here we can find the weighted parameter p is equal to a divided by r area divided by hydraulic radius now the fourth step and the most important steps come for the designing of line canal is finding the dimensions dimensions means uh, width of canal or depth of canal okay or bed slope of canal So we will find the width, depth and bed of canal. So before starting this we need to know one thing while designing line canal we can face two kind of canals either your canal be in In this shape triangular shape 
or your canal can be in trapezoidal shape you can face these two types of uh, canals either triangular or either trapezoidal so we can say that generally two type of canal sections are adopted for line canals what are they the first one is round bottom or you can say circular bottom round bottom triangular section canal or the second is round bottom corners trapezoidal canals got it so either it's triangular section canal or trapezoidal canal we actually made them circular at the bottom triangular canal is made it constructed something like this bottom is cornered and in trapezoidal we round the corners something like this okay so we can have two shapes so for both shapes we need to find the width depth and bed slope so let's see one by one what is going to be the dimensions for this uh, round bottom triangular section let's see first this one let's see first the uh, dimensions for round bottom triangular section canal let's see this first okay one more thing we need to know is that we actually prefer round bottom triangular canals when the value of your flow is less than 50 cubics or meter cube per second and we prefer round bottom trapezoidal when your Q is greater than 50 meter cube per second okay so this is the point you need to remember 50 meter cube per second and 50 meter cube per second okay. let's move forward and see how we can find the dimensions for a triangular section canals which is round from the bottom let's draw a figure and try to understand as we said that it will look like uh, this right something like this 
okay and this is the water level and it is being ground at the bottom right here it is there it is round at the bottom something like this right so let's say let's say this is the let me use a different color okay I said this is this is going to be the depth right which we represent with y this is the depth of the canal and this is circular right if it is circular that means that the distance from hair to hair and distance from hair to hair is also going to be equal to y this is also y okay and one more thing from the end of the circular point to here this angle is going to be 90 degrees it is perpendicular these two lines are going to be perpendicular okay it should be perpendicular to get the maximum results means that if this is 90 if this angle is 90 it is known to be most economical okay so again we can say that the angle here we call it theta this is theta so this angle will be also equal to this angle so this is theta this will be al this is also going to be theta and the angle from hair to hair is 90 this is also 90 right so what this angle is going to be if this is 90 whole angle is 90 that means that this is theta right so can we say that as we know 90 degree means pi by 2 right in radians so can we write this angle as pi by 2 minus theta am i right this one and similarly this angle will be also pi by 2 minus theta right i hope till this point everything is clear after that we may need this distance from hair to hair from hair to hair what is this distance going to be let's try to find out this distance <coughs> sorry as you can see that this angle is 90 right and this angle is pi by 2 minus theta and we go to triangle let's try to draw this triangle separately here let me draw it here this triangle can be it will look like something like this this is the black side let me use the same colors as in the triangle this is the second side and this is the third side right so 
we have drawn this triangle here down the angle values of angle this angle is pi by 2 minus theta right this is 90 degrees and what is this distance this is y right as you can see here this is y and we need to find this distance and this is going to be our hypotenuse right the side which is opposite to the 90 degrees always hypotenuse right this is our hypotenuse this is our base and this is our perpendicular if you follow the rule of uh, right angle triangle this is going to be our base right this is our perpendicular of triangle and this is hypotenuse so let's see we have trigonometric ratios sine theta as we know that sine theta is equal to perpendicular upon hypotenuse cos theta is equal to base upon hypotenuse and tan theta is equal to perpendicular upon base so from these trigonometric ratios what we are going to use to find out this we already have base right and we need to find the perpendicular and we got the angle so perpendicular upon base is tan theta so we will use this trigonometric ratio to find out the value so here tan theta is equal to perpendicular we need to find it let's name it x let's call it x x upon perpendicular upon base base is our y in this case right so this will become tan our theta is pi by 2 minus theta is equal to x by y okay so another relation we know that 10 pi by 2 minus theta is equal to cot theta so cot theta is equal to x by y what we are supposed to find we are supposed to find x right so what is what will be x so this implies that x will be equal to y cot theta am i right we got the value of x here we call it x right so this side is going to be this is equal to y cot theta similarly this side will be also equal to y cot theta okay got it so that's it let's move forward and try to find out the values for depth of the canal and the first thing we need to find out the cross-sectional area and weighted parameter from the, uh, those two factors we can find out the depth and the width of the canal so let's first see the cross-sectional try to find out the cross-sectional area of canal triangular canal right so what is going to be the area as you can see here we have three uh, figures right there are one triangle second this is also right angle triangle these are similar and then we have a third shape this is a part of a circle right 
if you draw it all this is going to be some sort of circle like this it is going to be a circle something like this so we have a part of circle this is part of circle third shape then two right angle triangles so we need to add them add the areas of these three shapes and we will get the cross sectional area so the cross sectional area is going to be equal to two into area of because we have two triangles right area of triangle plus area of part of circle okay or is some sort of arch so the area of triangle is going to be 2 into 1 upon 2 as you can see that base multiply by height right what is base base is y let me just write y 1 upon 2 base multiply by height base is y and then multiply it with height what is height x we find it here y cot theta multiply by y cot theta okay plus area of circle now this is the typical part we need to find what is going to be the area of the circular part let's see a relation the area of the circular part let me find it here as we know that as we know the whole area of circle is 2 pi right 2 pi in the form of radian right because 2 pi means 360 degree angle and we have which can be equal to the area of circle which is pi r square you know that right this is the uh, formula for area can we write this as 2 pi is equal to pi r is the radius in our case the radius is y right it will be y square and let's find it for one unit one is going to be equal to pi y square divided by 2 pi right if for one one degree or one radian if for one radian this is the area how much we need we need the area for 2 radian right uh, 2 theta sorry we need the area from here to here this is 2 theta so for 2 theta what is going to be the area for 2 theta the area is going to be pi y square divided by 2 pi multiply by 2 theta got it so this is the area for this circular part got it so let's add it here what we got we got the area of the circular part is pi y square divided by 2 pi multiply by 2 theta okay this 2 will cancel this 2 this pi will cancel this pi and the formula for area will become will be equal to this 2 will cancel out this 2 so the remaining is y square 
कोट थीटा प्लस वाई स्क्वेयर ओके इफ यू फर्दर सिंप्लीफाई इट इफ यू टेक वाई स्क्वेयर इज कॉमन यू विल गेट कोट थीटा सॉरी हेयर वाई थीटा टू वाई स्क्वेयर थीटा कोट थीटा प्लस थीटा ओके सो दिस इज द फार्मूला फॉर एरिया क्रोसेक्शनल एरिया ऑफ ट्राइंगुलर कैनाल विच इज राउंड एट द बॉटम एंड दिस थीटा इज ऑलवेज इन रेडियंस it's not in degrees it's in radian okay let's highlight it wait 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 okay this is the cross sectional area one thing we got is this this is important and other thing this was our second step our fourth step right and this one is for very parameter this one is to find out the area in second step and first step was to find out the velocity for velocity we have formula this is the formula to find out the velocity so these were four steps in fourth step we actually find out we are finding the uh, dimensions for this first shape triangular then we will move to the trapezoidal so the uh, dimensions of round bottom triangular section we found out the formula for area right so let's move to next and find out the parameter weighted parameter for this now the weighted parameter p is going to be equal what what is going to be the weighted parameter obviously the weighted parameter will be from here to here and then this circular arch and then this right are you getting me follow the mouse cursor from here to here the part which is been wet due to water is known as weighted parameter so we got y cot theta plus y cot theta two y cot theta and then we need this red part red line right so what is going to be the length of this red line let's try to find it out here on the other side let's try to find it out here we have a relation we know that the circumference of whole circle right if you got this whole circle it is going to be 2 pi right 2 pi but in our case we just need a part of the circle this one this part from here to here we need the circumference from here to here right so this is going to be equal to uh, this part will be equal to only y right 2 pi is going to be equal to 2 pi y so if you are finding it for one unit then it will be 2 pi y divided by 2 pi okay this is for one and we need it for 2 pi 2 theta sorry for 2 theta it is going to be equal to 2 pi divided by 2 pi y we will multiply this with 2 theta we will get the distance or parameter this is this is going to to be the length this is going to be the length of this red part from here to here so when you cancel it out 2 pi cancels 2 pi and the you will left with uh, y 2 theta right this will be the length of this red line so let's find out the parameter the parameter is going to be y cot theta plus y 2 theta 
plus y cot theta, right? So let's find out the parameter. So where the parameter is going to be y cot theta then plus 2 theta y plus y cot theta. When you simplify it, p will be equal to 2y cot theta plus 2y theta, right? When you take 2y as common, then it will become cot theta plus theta. So this is equation. This is equation for finding out the weighted parameter for triangular shape canal which is bottom uh, which is circular at the bottom okay so these are two formulas for or to find out the cross section area and weighted parameter if you want to see the relation uh, for the hydraulic radius let's see the hydraulic radius which is area divided by weighted parameter right can we write these equations as y square cot theta plus theta and then divided by 2y cot theta plus theta okay cot theta plus theta is cancelled with cot theta plus theta so 1y is cancelled with this so that means that in case of triangular shape canal the hydraulic radius will equal to y by 2 half of depth of canal so you can get this in some sort of mcqs that if this means let me write it down here this means that the R which is hydraulic radius of a triangular canal with round bottom is always half of depth of canal because why is depth right depth of that canal so this is very important point you need to note Again, one more important thing is that in this case, in this case means in case of triangular canal uh, with round bottom, not, not it down, in case of triangular canal with round bottom if slope is not given by slope I mean side slope if side slope is not given assume it 1.5 ratio 1 okay this is another important point we need to remember and here 1.5 means your uh, horizontal slope and one is your vertical slope sorry 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 yeah right right it's right similarly for trapezoidal 2 you need to assume 1.5 to 1 ratio if side slope is not given so the our first section triangular section is done 
and let's move this is done right this is done now move to the second what what will happen if your canal lined canal is round bottom corner trapezoidal canal the second is we need to find dimensions for round bottom corner canal corner trapezoidal canal right let's find out the area and weight parameter for this let's draw it here okay this is our canal trapezoidal canal okay and let me use a different color let's say this is the top water level and if you draw it perpendicular from here to here and here to here this is going to be equal to from here to here this is B right width of the canal and this is Y depth of the canal ok let me draw it again there is some it will become complicated if we draw it like this let's try to draw it again and ok let's try to draw it like this things will become easier to understand because we need to write a lot of things around this figure so it will become com uh, complicated to understand actually this is a bit time con consuming but it is very important let's draw a few lines from here to here from here to here and then if you use a dotted line again this is making I'm making a mistake wait 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 sorry okay as we said that the trapezoidal section we are going to make these corners round like right this is going to be round and this is also going to be something like this round these corners are round so from here to here the depth is going to be y right this is y similarly this depth is also going to be y from other side of the circle if you draw a line from here to here this is also going to be y similarly on the other side this is also going to be y okay so we got one two three four five shapes right and then when it comes to the angles this is going to be theta and this is also theta if this is theta what is going to be this angle as we have discussed previously this is going to be pi by 2 minus theta right and this is pi by 2 minus theta because this whole angle is 90 degree and this angle is 90 degrees here 
and this angle is 90 degrees here so we need to find this distance and we need to find we already find this distance equation for this distance in previous section okay yeah that's it and this distance from here to here this is going to be sorry, 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 sorry. this is going to be b right what is this distance we already found in the triangular section this is y cot theta right we are not going to find it calculate again we already found it y cot theta and this is our b and this distance from here to here this is also b okay that's it right now let's try to find out the area inverted parameter so when it when it comes to area going to be the area cross sectional area cross sectional area of this trapezoidal shape it is going to be one two three four five areas right let me mark the similar uh, areas let me mark them with same name this is a this is a right both are same this b shape and this b shape are same and this third one is c so can we write the area cross section area is 2 into area of a plus 2 into area of b right to uh, and then plus c what is the area of a it is a right angle triangle so 2 into formula for area is 1 upon 2 base multiplied by height what is base base is y and height is y cot theta so it is y multiplied by y cot theta this is area of these two shapes okay then we will plus it with the area of these two shape b they are actually circular at the bottom right so for the circular shape we have found the formula to find out the area which was from 2 pi is equal to 2 pi y square right from this relation we found for one radian it is going to be 2 pi y square divided by 2 pi and in our case we need it for only one theta in triangular there were two thetas in this case there is only one theta so for theta it is going to be 2 pi y square divided by 2 pi multiply by theta right when you cancel the terms 2 pi with 2 pi the left you will left with y square theta so you will left with y square theta this is going to be the area of circular part area of this one right y square theta and we have two similar shapes so it is going to be 2 into y square theta then plus the area of c c part is b multiplied by y it's a triangular shape right so it is b into y this is what we got cancel the terms whatever you can cancel 2 will be cancelled with 2 and now just simplify it so the formula for area is going to be area is equal to y square cot theta plus 2y square theta plus by 
got it if you further uh, simplify it can we write this equation as can we write it as uh, let me write it down on the next line area is equal to by plus uh, take y square is common in these two terms y square then we will left with cot theta plus theta okay that's the formula I think there is one mistake there should be this two should be not here okay y square theta is the area okay Oh, there is one mistake. There is a mistake. There is a mistake. This is not two row. Sorry, sorry. Here is not two. Two pi is equal to pi y square, right? So this pi will cancel with pi, and this is not two. You will be left with two here. divided by 2 this is going to be the area so here you will get the value of 2 here we got 2 this 2 will cancel with the 2 so you will left with this formula this is going to be the formula for the uh, cross sectional area of trapezoidal shape whose corners are round Now let's find out the formula for uh, weighted parameter. Weighted parameter is going to be equal to the sum of what y cot theta, this distance, and then b, this distance, and b. So now we need to find this distance. This distance we already found it. as we have discussed that this is going to be equal to the relation was 2 pi is equal to 2 pi y right and from here for one unit 2 pi y divided by 2 pi and this will cancel and remaining will be y right so we need it for just 1 pi pi will be equal to y okay in this case this is equal to this distance is going to be equal to y and this will be also y in case of trapezoidal section so y and this is pi right so we need it for 1 pi so we will multiply it with pi so this distance will be y pi and this is also y pi got it let's add them all y cot theta plus y pi plus b plus y pi plus y cot theta this will be our weighted parameter for trapezoidal section what is that this is y cot theta plus y pi plus b plus y pi plus y cot theta when you further simplify it 2y cot theta plus 2y theta plus b okay here 2y is common if we take 2y as common the equation will become 2y into 
कोट थीटा प्लस थीटा प्लस बी दिस इज इक्वेशन फॉर वेट इट पैरामीटर ऑफ ट्रेपोजाइडल सेक्शन गोरिट दैट्स इट वी आर डन विद द डिजाइन स्टेप्स सो वट एवर दी अवर क्रॉस सेक्शन विल बी to find out the uh, dimensions that is depth width of bed slope we are going to use these formulas of area and width parameter a and p these two formulas when our section will be triangular and we will use these two formulas when our section will be trapezoidal to find out the values of y and b okay that's done let's see these are the steps for designing line canal we need to follow these steps so at the end i need to tell you few more important points there is a term known as free board do you know that for i either it is a triangular section canal or trapezoidal we need to consider the free board it is the distance from the full supply level to the top of the canal from here to here this is known as this distance from here to here this distance is known as free board so what should be the distance of this free board what should be the depth of this free board let me tell you free board value free board values for this section it is actually defined by indian standard specifications i think the code is uh, you can find it is 10430 10430 and 1982 codes from 1982 you can find it from here so the values of board are given as and uh, if let me choose the blue color just bear me for 5 to 10 more minutes and we are done with the lecture so free board should be is not should be it should it is generally taken as 0.75 meter for discharge greater than 10 meter cube per second what if the discharge in your canal is more than 10 meter cube per second then we consider the free board to be 0.75 0.75 meter we will keep the free board 0.75 meter in your in our canal line canal if the discharge is greater than 10 meter cube actually this is general value so the few more important points for permissible velocity limits the other point is what should be the permissible velocity the permissible velocity of flow in a lined canal where is between 1.5 meter per second to 2.5 meter per second and it depends on the 
type of material used for covering the side slopes and bed of canal if if the bed or side slopes are covered with cement concrete then the value is going to be 2 meter per second value of velocity is going to be 2 meter per second to 2.5 meter per second but if it is uh, the side slopes or bed are made up of burnt clay or burnt clay bricks then it is going to be we will consider the velocity of flow is a 1.8 meter per second if it is made up of boulders then we will consider the velocity as 1.5 meter per second got it so it depends upon the material which we are using uh, to cover the side slopes and bed of the canal so these are the points you need to remember we will use them while solving the and numerical problems so cement concrete 2 to 2.5 if burnt clay is used 1.8 if boulders are used it is going to be 1.5 that's it let's close the lecture here and in next lecture we will solve a numerical problem to design a lined canal okay so see you guys in next video till then goodbye